right now. New tonight, a business owner puts on his detective hat to solve his own burglary after his Southside Construction Company suffered a break in. The owner of Galleon Contracting tracked down the stolen items before he called police. This isn't the first burglary charge the suspect faces. The night team's Garrett Berger with how he was caught. Maurice Martinez saw the signs of a break in at his business on New Laredo Highway right away. Yeah, this is the opening. Uh, once I came in, then I realized that this the, this uh, the chain link was pushed all the way to the side. At the Martinez time, said his business, here. Galleon Contracting, so has had this, several break ins the past few months. Last week's was just the latest, but it was also caught on camera. He came in, kind of he was walking around, got video of him snooping around the back. The thief took lumber, a car stereo and a barbecue pit towing it out through a hole in the fence. But what the thief didn't know was that the tire had fallen off of the barbecue pit and left marks like this on the pavement. And Martinez says he was able to follow the trail to his stolen stuff. Martinez said the trail ended about a mile away at a house on West Mayfield. And also there's a truck that came out on the on the surveillance video. The pit was covered up with the tarp and then all our plywood was stacked up there leaning against his house. After that, Martinez called the police, who said they staked out the house, where an officer saw Sepulveda near the truck wearing the same Cowboys jersey as in the video. They took him in and confronted with stills from the surveillance video. Police say Sepulveda copped to the theft. For Martinez, the arrest is a victory. No, I still get the goosebumps, like, man, got this guy, you know. It's not the first time Sepulveda has been caught on camera. Just last month, he was nabbed for three burglary cases. You can find that story on our website, ksat.com. As for this instance, he's still in the Bear County Jail, booked on several charges. At the Bear County Jail, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. It's an unexpected population of people who tend to be on the front lines of human trafficking, rideshare drivers. That's why the Texas Attorney General's Office and Uber are teaming up to hold training sessions across the state. An Uber spokesman explains that human traffickers are known to be using rideshare platforms as their preferred way to move their victims from place to place. So during the training sessions, experts are teaching drivers how to recognize and report human trafficking if they suspect one of their passengers may be a victim. If their passenger looks to be a minor who doesn't know where they're going and can't offer um, any information on who actually booked um, the ride using the Uber app, that sometimes is a sign of suspicious activity. Um, there's a lot of moving victims between hotels, from hotels to hotel, um, so those kinds of instances. They've now held training sessions in Austin and San Antonio. We'll move on to other Texas towns next week. Uber currently training many drivers in Florida because the Super Bowl will take place there this year. The spokesman said the Super Bowl, one of the most common events for human trafficking. A San Antonio sex trafficking survivor using her voice during National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. She held a town hall seminar tonight with a panel including experts from law enforcement and the DA's office. As the night team's Courtney Friedman reports, it's a joint community effort to show the public trafficking is happening nationwide and right here in San Antonio. We do want to warn you, though, the following content may be disturbing to some. It was 32 years ago, but Maria Perez remembers every detail. I had lost someone that I dearly loved, and I was vulnerable, and I was depressed. So that's when they engage with you. They, meaning traffickers. At first, he was the most charming person. Ah, oh, the charmers. Everything started to change. I said, then he controlling his abusiveness. Then one day he told her they were going to Reynosa, Mexico. She said he forced her into the trunk of a car. If you make any noise, I will kill you and your family. Once in Mexico, she said the unspeakable happened. They raped me in front of everybody. They were laughing, they were drinking. I wasn't the only person there. There was other women there. For weeks, she was kept in a tiny room, repeatedly sold for sex. When she was finally brought back to America, she escaped and out of fear for her life, kept her secret for almost three decades. A lot of people are still blind. So that's not happening here. This is America. There's no way that can happen here. Yes, it is. It's happening in our own back backyard. That pushed her to speak up and start the organization Our Empowering Women of America, or OWE, allowing women and experts to use their voices to educate and make change. We have to work together and we have to work with law enforcement. I mean, there is, they can't do everything. They need help. 
Tonight, she hosted a town hall seminar with members of the Bear County Sheriff's Office and DA's office on hand to offer information and take questions. Uh, awareness, prevention, you know, what to look for, the signs for, and the, the percentages of what, what's happening out there. Perez says by continuing the conversation, trafficking can be prevented and lives can be saved. And that was Courtney Friedman reporting. The seminar is part of Dream Week, a program encouraging community engagement on human rights and citywide issues. To find out the red flags of human trafficking and who to call if you see them, go to KSAT.com. It wasn't a gun, but some type of vehicle that apparently forced San Antonio pol police to shoot and kill a man on the southeast side. That investigation into the officer involved shooting expected to develop in the coming days. It happened at a home on Stetson View after an attempt to serve a warrant escalated into violence. The warrant for a felon in possession of a gun, but police say the wanted man refused to surrender. Police say the man used a vehicle to ram into occupied police vehicles. An officer with the federal task force shot and killed the man. Police later took two women into custody and a man into custody. It's unclear how they may be related to the investigation. Three adults and three minors, all accused in a case involving stolen purses and a stolen car. Police say it happened in San Marcos yesterday afternoon at a Walmart. Here's a look at the three adults in the case. Witnesses told police the suspects took two purses from customers and then tried using the keys inside to find the victim's vehicles. Police say a Buick Enclave was eventually taken and the suspects inside tried getting away but ended up crashing. Investigators later learned all six suspects in the in the case first got to San Marcos by stealing a vehicle in Pflugerville. The new on the night beat significant losses leading to closures for Taco Cabana. There are 19 locations closing across the state. Here at home, there are two restaurants closing down. The location on Blanco Road and West Avenue closed this morning. A second location on West Highway 90 and West Military Drive also closed. The Fiesta Restaurant Group, which is the parent company for Taco Cabana, says nearly nearly all employees impacted will be offered positions at other locations. We have the full list of closures across the state on our website right now, ksat.com. Meanwhile, on their Facebook page, Taco Cabana created a post in honor of their co-founder, Lynn Moody, who died recently. He operated the original Taco Cabana with his parents right here in San Antonio. That location still open, sits on the corner of Hildebrand and San Pedro. Right now, a live look outside. This should be a view of the Alamo wow. Dome tonight. It's out there somewhere. Yeah, meteorologist yeah. Katie Blake has been tracking the fog for much of the day today. And Katie, how long will this last? We need a foghorn right right about now. Just go ahead and sound it because we've got some dense fog developing across parts of South Texas here in San Antonio. We're down to a quarter mile visibility. As you saw in the view out there, it's very foggy. Also down to a quarter mile visibility from Austin to New Braunfels. Half a mile visibility there in Gonzales. And this fog will continue to spread off to the west of the I-35 corridor tonight and through the early morning hours of Tuesday morning. Most of us are under a dense fog advisory until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's for visibility dropping to or below a quarter of a mile. So we are going to be locked into this fog overnight and through mid to late morning tomorrow. Maybe a few peaks of sun tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk more about what the rest of the week has in store and when we'll see all this humidity clear out coming up in your full planning forecast. Steve. Thank you, Katie. An upcoming traffic alert to be aware of starting on Wednesday. There's going to be a road. There will be road work and closures on La Quintera Parkway between I-10 and Vance Jackson. Crews with transportation and capital improvements will be replacing some pavers within the street. Drivers will still be able to access the rim and the theater. Work is expected to be complete by Saturday. And a reminder, water and electrical improvements in the downtown area are continuing. San Saba Street will be closed at the intersection of Dolorosa up until Wednesday. Eastbound lanes on Buena Vista will remain open. Well, VIA is hoping to avoid traffic troubles as San Antonio continues to, do, to grow. The Mass Transit Agency wants to talk about a 10-year plan that would keep everyone moving. The goal includes a better bus system, an advanced rapid transit network, which the VIA president says will cut down on commute times with dedicated lanes to keep transit moving. The plan that we've prepared is, is really the product of two years worth of public comment. Um, and so as we have honed it down into a plan now, 
we're interested in what the public's perspective of the plan that they actually helped us design is. The plan is called VIA Reimagined, and VIA wants to get your opinion by phone. They'll be hosting a telephone town hall on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. The link to register for this event is on our website, ksat.com. A lot of us have seen the developments and the fires going on in Australia right now and how it's affecting wildlife. Well, new developments on the San Antonio Zoo's efforts to help Australia. The Alamo Draft House here at home is teaming up with a local zoo to raise money for the Australia Wildlife Fund. Guests who are buying tickets to Doolittle, Bad Boys for Life, or their horror show screening of Howling 3 can add a donation to their ticket either online or in person. Remember, the San Antonio Zoo also matching the first $5,000 to their fund. We also have information online at ksat.com. Still ahead on the night beat, a local school district in the running for the top prize of $50,000, the competition they've become finalists in. Coming up. Now the presidential race is narrowing ahead of tomorrow's debate in Iowa. With Senator Cory Booker now out, who's left in the race? And new details in what the Justice Department now calls an act of terror at a Florida naval base. It's next on the Night Beat. Weeks after three U.S. soldiers were shot and killed at a Florida naval, ba naval base, the Justice Department now describing the incident as an act of terror. Investigators say 21-year-old Mohammed Al-Shamrani was motivated by jihadist ideology. He was a member of the Royal Saudi Air Force, and investigators say he posted a message on September 11th saying the countdown has begun along with other anti-American messages on social media. Now, the attorney general says they need Apple to help them unlock the shooter's iPhones. The shooter was killed in the December shooting, and 21 Saudi servicemen have now been expelled from the U.S. The crowd of presidential candidates now smaller. Democrat Cory Booker dropping out of the presidential race today. There is just one remaining African-American candidate, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, who entered the race late last year. Booker claims money is keeping the New Jersey senator from building a winning campaign. Fundraising would be harder since he didn't qualify for the Democratic debate planned for tomorrow in Iowa. Booker's Senate seat is also up for a vote this year. The Associated Press reports he will run for re-election to the Senate. There are now just 12 candidates in the race for president. They include former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who visited San Antonio over the weekend. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and former Vice President Joe Biden, also among the 12 Democratic candidates, still holding steady in the race for president. And by the way, Texas is one of 14 states holding primary elections in March. It's called Super Tuesday, and the early voting period begins February 18th. Voters will nominate their candidate for president and vice president. And here in Bexar County, the sheriff is up for re-election, along with multiple county commissioners and constable races. But this is just the primary to choose who's going to run against each other. We have all the information you need on KSAT.com under the politics section. Well, check this out. The top prize is $50,000 for student learning, and one local school district is in the running for their category. Bernie ISD was named as one of the three finalists in the state for the HEB Excellence in Education Award. It's unclear who the other two districts will be, but HEB representatives are expected to make an announcement tomorrow. The award will take into account parent and community involvement, as well as growth for students and staff. Good luck to Bernie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at live cam. You know, up north this time of year, they have gray, they have fog. <laughs> you know, a lot of people complain about never seeing the sun and needing light therapy. <laughs> That's not a San Antonio thing. No. Now, no. Normally. No, but today it is. Today yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, today felt like we were up in Seattle, Pacific yeah. Northwest or something like that. I am hopeful that we'll see a little, a few more peaks of sun tomorrow afternoon, but really this whole week is way more cloud cover than sunshine. We really won't clear out again until the start of next weekend, so really, really gray. <laughs> Monday's bad enough, and then you throw in this type of weather, and it was maybe just a wash for you today. Here's how high temperatures played out. We did have a few spots sneak into the low 70s, well to the west, 73 year high temperature in Del Rio. We only got up to 61 today here in San Antonio. Our average this time of year is around 63, so we were pretty close to that, but with the cloud cover moving on in, we just did not have any room for our temperatures to really budge. Right now, we're only down to 
60. So not a whole lot of room for uh, that air to heat up and cool down when we've got so much cloud cover and moisture uh, hanging around with us here in South Texas. A look at our dew points now. Low 70s down closer to the coast, low to mid 60s on the coastal bend. Upper 50s here in San Antonio. These numbers have been climbing a lot over the past day and a half or so, and that's what's bringing in the fog. So when our air temperatures and our dew points get very close together or even are the same, that's when uh, fog develops. And we've got a lot of it out there already tonight. Uh, very low visibilities from Austin down I-35 to here in San Antonio. One mile visibility in Pleasanton. Half mile visibility in Hondo back over to Gonzales. So by far the most dense fog and the most widespread fog has been down to the south along and southeast of the I-35 corridor. But through the overnight hours, I am expecting fog to continue to fill in off to the west, so everyone will have a chance for at least a little bit of patchy fog through tomorrow morning. Uh, but I think we're going to have a lot of dense fog out there, and that's why that dense fog advisory was issued through 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So from this point tonight through mid to late morning tomorrow, dense fog will be possible, and that can be very dangerous. So please make sure you're going to factor in a little bit of extra time for your commute tomorrow morning and that you use your low beams, not your high beams. High beams actually make it harder to see when visibility is low. So remember to use those low beam headlights. Look at satellite and radar. We had what felt like a lot of rain around today, a lot of very light rain that was off and on through the course of the day, but it only added up to five one hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport in San Antonio. And Hard to pick out any rain on radar now. All the rain we've had around has just been so light. Radar even has a hard time picking it up. But obviously a lot of cloud cover, not only here in our part of the state, but also off in East Texas, even North and Central Texas as well. We've got a lot of moisture streaming in from the Southwest. We're seeing that moisture come in in the form of cloud cover. And we're going to have a hard time breaking that flow for the next few days. So that's why I expect plenty of clouds for the rest of the work and school week. So tomorrow morning, another messy commute. Like I said, make sure you give yourself a little bit of extra time because we're not only going to have the fog, but also mist and drizzle to contend with tomorrow morning. I am hopeful for a few more peaks of sun tomorrow afternoon. Overall, though, still a mostly cloudy day. Another round of morning fog and drizzle as we get into Wednesday morning, just still socked into this cloud cover. And as we get into Thursday morning, I also expect another round of you guessed it, fog and drizzle. But it looks like our best chance to get some measurable rain will come on Thursday as a frontal boundary stalls out to our north. That will create a pretty big spread in temperatures. I'm going to keep us on the warm side of things, so highs still in the 70s on Sunday. But northern hill country off closer to the I-20 corridor, there's going to be some cooler air up there. But this boundary that separates that, uh, separate, creates that temperature gradient will help to produce uh, some showers as we get into the day Thursday. Friday, we'll turn our attention to the north once again because the next cool front that comes through to sweep all of this high humidity and everything out will be rolling in late Friday night and early Saturday morning. So until then, forecast is really going to look a lot like this. Overcast skies, fog, mist, and drizzle in the forecast pretty much each morning. High temperatures tomorrow in the low 70s with a few peaks of sunshine. So not a whole lot of change for the next few days. The weekend looks a little nicer, but as we look forward to the holiday on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, that could be a pretty chilly day there with highs limited to the 50s. All right. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like it was that long ago. He might have been on the trading block. You're talking now about DeMar DeRozan, honor, right? Yeah. And now he's a player of the week for the first time as a member of the Spurs, but not for the first time in his career. When we come back, more about DeMar DeRozan's contribution that has led to a Spurs turnaround during this season and not one but two Astros officials fired in a cheating scandal. Coming up. Yeah, man, I don't know nobody who get two tributes in a row. <laughs> find somebody else where you do that so nah, that's awesome. DeMar DeRozan was so popular in Canada before the forced Kawhi trade with the Raptors he was given another tribute in Toronto before DeRozan took over the game in big board sports. How about that a double tribute DeMar DeRozan has been named the Western Commerce Player of the Week and that comes right after his performance in Toronto yesterday. This marks the first time that DeRozan been named the NBA Player of the Week since joining the Silver and Black back in 2018 and now becomes just the fourth player in Spurs history to be named Player of the Week at least 10 times joining Tim Duncan, David Robinson and his current teammate LaMarcus Aldridge. DeRozan averaged 29.3 points, six and a half rebounds, six assists while shooting 63 percent from the field and also is the only player in the NBA to average 25 plus points more than six rebounds 
2006 assists while shooting 60%. That comes after he led the Spurs on an 18-point comeback against the Raptors and included scoring 22 of his game by 25 points in the second half in the 105-104 to victory. DeRozan also one of only three players in the last 35 years to score more than 20 points, three-plus assists, and shooting better than 52% in 11 straight games, joining Michael Jordan and LeBron James to accomplish that feat. It's fun just being able to go out there and compete. And, you know, um, once you have that confidence, you know, no matter if you have a slow start, you're not going to get down on yourself and get frustrated. You know it's going to come back around. So it goes a long way, man, and, and, and you can tell when guys have it. I mean, we got another big test against Miami to close out this road trip. So um, we focus on that. He's right about that, but they don't close out that road trip until Wednesday, so they have two days off in Miami. The game Wednesday at 630 in the American Airlines Arena. Major League Baseball came down hard on the Houston Astros today when they announced both team general manager Jeff Lunau and manager A.J. Hinch were suspended for a year following their investigation into sign stealing during the 2017 regular season and playoffs that included the World Series championship. The organization used cameras to steal signs from opposing teams and using bats on trash cans in the dugout was signaled primarily off-speed pitches to batters. Less than an hour after the suspensions were announced, Astros team owner Jim Crane called a news conference and fired both men. I have higher standards for the city and the franchise, and I'm going above and beyond MLB's penalty. Today, I have made the decision to dismiss A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau. We need to move forward with a clean slate, and the Astros will become stronger, a stronger organization because of this today. Now, Major League Baseball also stripped the Astros of a first and second round draft picks in 2020 and 2021 and fined the team $5 million. Now, shortly after the firing was announced, A.J. Hinch released this statement. It says, in part, I regret being connected to these events. I'm disappointed in our club's actions with this timeline. I accept the commissioner's decision. While this evidence consistently showed I didn't endorse or participate in the sign ceiling practices, I failed to stop them, and I am deeply sorry. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yeah, that's not the only team on the hot seat in Houston. So are the Texans, more specifically their head coach Bill O'Brien after their playoff meltdown against the Chiefs in Kansas City after going up by 24 points. Now, several decisions made by O'Brien had most fans scratching their heads. After getting out to a 21 to nothing lead, the Texans had a chance to make it 28 to nothing. Only O'Brien decided not to go for it on fourth down in inches just outside the 10 and instead settled for a field goal. And then in the second quarter, called for a fake punt deep in their own territory. They saw Justin Reed's carry gets snuffed out and that ignited an unbelievable comeback as the Chiefs outscore the Texans 51 to 7 scoring on seven straight possessions in the 51 31 route now the playoff meltdown has left O'Brien on an extremely hot seat I think any loss is tough uh, this is a tough loss to feel bad for the players um, guys put a lot of work in and we just uh, we just didn't get it done I feel like we're in the right uh, we're moving in the right direction uh, I think we did a lot of good things this year not enough obviously feel good about uh, you know where we're headed the national championship in college football next the Texas Longhorns announcing more coaching staff changes today as they prepare for their 2020 season Longhorns are getting new position coaches at both cornerback and wide receivers the new cornerbacks coach is Jay Valai who replaces Joe Washington, a Texas native and former all-conference defensive back, and comes to Texas after coaching at Rutgers last season. The new wide receivers coach is Andre Coleman, who's a former offensive coordinator and receivers coach at K-State. And in the national championship in college football underway at the Superdome in New Orleans, LSU has taken the lead. This is very late in the third quarter. They have not started the fourth quarter yet. As you can see, Tigers are over the Tigers. 35-25, we'll see who is the toughest Tiger in the next few minutes. It's a very long game. Yes, it, it is. Mean? Well, there have been injuries, penalties, a uh, lot of reviews, which slows the game down. But over three hours? And going. And going. Thanks, Greg. We'll mm -hmm. be right back. Dense fog advisory out now until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, so please be careful on the roads. We'll have the fog and the light rain, too, so kind of a double whammy tomorrow morning. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Turn on those headlights, yes. everybody. GMSA at 4.30 in the morning. Good night.